Hello and good morning. Welcome to Virtual Coffee at the Growth Hub. Everyone, everyone in Facebook land. Happy Australia Day for yesterday. I think a few of us are a little bit shady. Maybe me, maybe I'll guess George. (laughs) <laughs> who is George is the director and founder of Positive Property Solutions and welcome George how are we doing today good morning Cheryl um yes very good look um I had a big Australia day yesterday uh, as one of my big traditions however um our virtual coffee I'm actually having a real coffee with our virtual coffee Excellent. and that's gonna make it a lot easier but um hello everyone on Facebook land everyone watching us live and uh, thank you for having me on your show Cheryl I love it Awesome. Excellent. Um, George Makoski, he is the director of Positive Property Solutions. And I have to say, George, the one thing, um, you know, I was thinking yesterday as part of Australia Day is how lucky are we, I mean, lucky overall to be living in Australia. But in particular, you know, um, you know, you and I are very much in the property space and property in Australia gives people so much freedom. Oh, uh, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's like- it's incredible. And I, and I think about the different countries across the world, like Australia allows anyone, anyone to be a property investor. A just, property. just about, just about. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you're absolutely right. And the funny thing is, I've done the numbers on every country in the world. Oh, right. I'm a bit of a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> so what I've done is when I do my research in Australia, there's about 16,000 suburbs. So I go through all the suburbs and rank them from one down to 16,000. Obviously, I've got my no-go zones at the bottom and my top 100 at the top. But, you know, if you look at the world, Australia is my number one place in the world to invest. Yeah. So um, if you look at um, you can look at the economy and um, population growth and things like that, because a lot of countries, their population growth is going down, their GDP is going down, they're having, actually struggling financially. And so basically Australia, then New Zealand, then Singapore... And then Israel, top four countries in the world to invest. Yeah, brilliant. But I think even in Singapore, so I, I spent a good amount of time in Singapore, and the yep. you know the property prices in Singapore sort of go like this. But there, but it has big fluctuations as well in Singapore, which which Australia doesn't have, and I said to a certain extent, totally, totally, New Zealand as well, and then Australia has the benefit of you know apart from COVID, like really strong migration and and. And, you know, you've got great natural resources and all of that. So um, I think, like I said, I'm thankful that we're here where we are. But, you know, today what we want to have a chat about, George, is, is your journey from, you know, a virtual coffee, which we, we, we talk about how we can um, obtain this level of freedom from the things we're doing, whether it's through business or through some other venture. I want to talk about your journey, George, because I know you haven't been, you know, you, you sort of, retired from business and all of that in your mid thirties, which for a lot of people is, is the goal, right? But yep. you continue to, to coach people. But I like to talk about that journey from having worked for, I know you've got family business and all, but what made you then go, no, I want to be good doing something myself. I want to go into property and then be able to help people. Talk us okay. through that process. Okay. So look, um, from a very young age, I was switched on to property. So I remember when I first played Monopoly when I was like six years old and I like thought, wow, there's so much fun. And my friend said, people play Monopoly in real life. And I said, as if adults play Monopoly. And he goes, yeah, they buy houses and land and they build hotels and all that. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Anyway, my parents didn't have a lot of money. You know, I came from a family that struggled to make ends meet. So I had to make my own Monopoly out of cardboard and bits of wood. And it was the worst Monopoly set in the world, but I still tried to play it. <laughs> So anyway, <clears throat> I started, I had an, entre- I guess there was something about me that was entrepreneurial because um, I started my first business when I was eight years old. Right. Yeah. So it was a paper run. So what I used to do is I used to deliver the messenger on Wednesdays to a certain area. I'd like two, 200 papers that I had to deliver. Then what happened is I systemized it and got my mum to sort of help me fold them all. And we'd, we'd work as a team to fold them all that I'd deliver them. Then I've got another area. So then I get friends from school to help deliver them. And I had three people working with me, delivering papers. And I was like getting one cent and they were getting one cent and we're doing well. 
right? So, you, had te- you, had a, you had a system and you had a team at, yep. eight, at eight years old. Okay, fabulous. Yep. <laughs> that was my first business. So, um, and yeah, so I, when, I, when I went overseas with my parents when I was 10 years old, I already had $500 saved up. In the 70s, you know, that was a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah, so I was uh, always a saver. So anyway, so I started, um, like most people, I was told, go to university, learn. So I was going to do electron- electronic engineering at, at uni. Mm. But I got, a, I got a part-time job selling teddy bears and ended up getting offered a job as an art dealer, which was like $1,000 a week. And I said, forget uni. I'm going to just learn sales and do this instead and yeah. loved it. So I moved to Sydney when I was 18 yeah. and got into selling artwork. And that was an amazing experience. And, you know, learning how to sell, because you sell in everything you do. Yeah. It's communicating, it's, it's communication. So that's what it is. So, and so then I started sort of getting involved in sales jobs, but I was never happy working for anyone else. Mm. It was really frustrating when I'd work for a business and I'd want to push further and the boss is just old fashioned and like, oh, no, 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 we, this is the way we do things. We don't do this. We don't do that. And, and just, they just, you know, really hamper what you can do. Mm. So I knew sooner or later I was just going to have to start my own business. So that's what I did. Mm. I started my own marketing business and it went really well. We kicked ass. So... Um, I was very passionate. I worked from seven in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, loved it and just worked hard and built a team around Australia. And we became the biggest main event company in the motor industry in Australia. Right. Results marketing, you may have heard of us. So what we used to do is we used to um, get Hessian and put it around dealerships, put music on, put a barbecue on, do a bit of spruiking, have a lot of fun and create a, a fun day for everyone where people come in and buy cars. Because, you know, car buying cars are so boring. Yeah. And so we made it exciting. An experience. You made it, made it a, a whole experience in the journey. For the yes. client. Yep. That's right. And what happened was I had competitors. And when I first started, I kept blowing my prices. And I realized I was going to get nowhere. I was ending up working for free. So what I decided to do was say, okay, this is it. From now on, I'm charging this much. And if they don't like it, I don't care. But I'm going to do the best service and charge the most. That was a game changer. Mm. So from getting cheaper and cheaper every every week, what happened was I put the prices up, slowed business down a little bit, but then what happened, because we could afford to give people an excellent service and give them a great job, we ended up taking the whole market because we're the premium brand that charged the most. Yeah. So it's funny how charging more gave us more clients. People were lining up and waiting, waiting in line to actually do business with us. It's the perceived value, is it? It's, it's the whole idea of okay, what am I getting from this this price? Like people will pay the price as so long as they're getting getting the results from it. Exactly, and the thing is, I systemized everything so it was it was packaged that they could just buy it and it was done. They didn't have to have any input. Where our competitors would go, okay, do you want to do this or this, and gave them fifty million choices. Yeah, fifty million choices weakened the result but also made it hard for them, made it more expensive, <laughs> but yeah. didn't help. Yeah. How did you, I mean, just on that point itself, George, because this is this is something that businesses, I guess a lot of businesses struggle with all the time. It's like that idea of, you know, either niching, niching down to a specific area, but just being a, a specialist in that system because everyone wants to be everything to everyone. Yes. What was the experience from you from when you, you know, even from a young age, you're talking about systemization and then the other part going, I'm going to offer everything. I want to be that person to everyone. Yep. So with, with results marketing, what happened was there was doing um, a certain event was where we made most of our money and everything else was really hard work. So I found by getting rid of everything except for one service, nothing else, we only did one thing. We only had one option. So it's, do you want the black car or the black car? So what happened by cutting out all the options, what I knew, I knew that we could become the best in Australia at that one thing. Yeah. Because you can't be best at everything. Yes. And two, it was, um, it was easier to deliver because we systemized. It was one thing. So it was a win-win for everyone because of that. Because the problem is 
saying no, and that's one thing, they call me the John West of property because I say no to most properties. And I was the John West of business because I was happy to say no if clients weren't the right fit, which was very different in those days. So there was, this is back in the 90s. And 90s, the, the wisdom at the time was you say yes to everything, no matter what. Yes. Right. That's what businesses did. And I did the opposite. I said no. And sometimes my staff get frustrated with me. And I say, look, if that client is not the right fit, no. Because one of the things we did in the mode industry, because the mode industry, it's quite a cowboy place. You, there's a lot of dealers, you can't really trust them that much. They've gone through a very, most, a lot of dealerships. They learned how to sell, you know, the old school way. And, you know, if you don't get your money up front, you're a small business, you're in trouble. So my rule was we got paid up front. That was one different thing about us. Some bu- some business said, no, nah, we're not doing that. And I said, that's fine. Go for go with someone else. I don't care. Because I don't want to chase people for money. I want to do the job and move on, you know. So I became very successful at that. And what happened was I ended up starting other businesses, thinking more businesses are better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right? did that make you get spread too thin? Totally. It was the worst thing I ever did. Because you're better off doing one thing really well then three things average, right? And it was a mistake of ego and not having the experience. So, you know, I thought, wow, I'm so good at business. I can do this, I'll just do this. So before you know it, I was running three businesses, had all these different staff and it was very frustrating because I wasn't making money. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I mean, so how did you then decide what to drop? Because that's a hard thing. That's it. Like you said, it's an ego. There's so much of ego that, that really stops us from. <laughs> Funny enough, someone decided for me, luckily. Right. Yeah. So one of my managers decided for me. I had a manager, I had a cookware company. We were selling cookware. And he stole a set of cookware from me. He stole? Stole, yep. Right. Stole from me. So he helped me make the decision because he stole from me. And I found out. And I was really pissed off because I'm like, I'm working seven days a week six in the morning, 10 o'clock at night to pay this guy and he's stealing from me. So I, I got him in front of everyone and said, you know, Jack, you're a piece of SHIT. You're, you're sacked now, get out, right? And I, you know, I, had, I guess I was very upset about it and it was good, that, but he did me a favor. If I see him now, I'll shake his hand and say, Jack, thank you so much because he opened the, the light to me saying, hey, this is not sustainable. You can't work seven days a week. Working harder and longer is not going to help your business. Mm. But what I did is I told him where to go. And I thought, forget it. I've just had enough working for everyone. So I closed two of my businesses down. And the core business results marketing, <clears throat> I gave it to my number one employee. And gave it got little, little little delivery little delivery here oh here we go <laughs> there, you, there you go might be might be your your kitchenware um one second can you take that outside please? and you can open it you and Felix. okay all right yeah and so that i mean shutting down two of your businesses obviously you know did, did that did that sort of was that sort of two steps forward and then sort of well, three steps backwards and then, then you know, a, a leap forward. Did that feel like that? Okay, well, look, um, <clears throat> it was a relief to just get out of business and have all that stress. It was so stressful for me. I was getting unhealthy. I wasn't looking after my health. Um, I really didn't look healthy either. I mean, I look younger now than what I did then when I, yeah. when I retired. Yeah. Uh, it was terrible. So I gave my other business to my... Um, it's number one employee, Belinda. So I had zero businesses. I quit work full stop and said, that's it, I'm done. Yeah, right. And what happened was I had 10 properties at a time. And these properties were making 180 grand a year. And I was using that money to subsidize my stupid businesses that were making nothing. Mm. So what happened was <laughs> got rid of my office, save 50,000, go to my staff, save hundreds of thousands there. So then suddenly from working 80 hours a week and earning nothing, I was earning, I was working zero and getting 180 grand a year for doing nothing. <laughs> that amazing? But, yeah, but you had to have that, that sort of, a, that, that awakening to sort of go, wait a minute, this isn't, 
you know, it's great to be able to say I've got these many businesses, but you know, when you look at the, the, the numbers, um, I mean, it's, <laughs> you're sort of going, what am I doing? Then is that when you decided, wait, you know, I'm leveraging my time and my money through property. Yeah. I, I realized, I didn't realize that my properties were doing so well because yeah. they were hidden. The money was hidden away because it kept going out towards the other businesses. So once I looked at my PL and yeah. worked out what was happening, it was simple. I, what I did is um, got, got, a, got another loan, got more money in an offset account, put 380,000 offset account just to keep me safe, yeah. closed all my businesses, gave one away and got a house on the beach, got a convertible Porsche and just traveled and partied and had a great time. And you're like, so why didn't I do this earlier? I know, I know. And I, and I, when I retired, because, you know, if you're in business watching this now and if you're struggling, you're probably thinking that is the best thing in the world. And it is. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because that's the next step. But funny enough, after doing nothing for two years, I was bored. Mm. Mm. So it's just not fulfilling. I was getting up later and, you know, what I do is just, you know, do a bit of surfing and muck around and do go to the gym and stuff like that. I spent four hours in the gym a day, which is fun, but it was boring. It wasn't fulfilling. And I had, um, I had dinner with Tim Ferriss. I don't know if you heard of Tim Ferriss. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I had dinner with Tim Ferriss before he was really famous before his show, after he wrote the book. Yeah. Yeah. And we had dinner in Melbourne and we'll talk about the four hour work week. And I was a big fan of him. Yeah. I was, oh, was going to say, I was going to say that this was, this was, the book for me that really yes. kicked things off particularly with outsourcing virtual assistants you know freelancing and all of that that that's the book there you go well tim ferris i had dinner with him and we we're talking about the four-hour work week and i said tim funny enough you know tim's quite shy when you first meet him right okay yeah he was sort of you know there was a group of us and was still sitting there and we had a bit of a glass of wine had a bit of a chat and after a couple of wines we both opened up and we just started talking and I was lucky because I was sitting right next to him. So we just had a really excellent conversation and we dug down into what I was doing. And I said, look, I'm doing nothing at the moment. And I said, is that following the four hour work week? He goes, no, it's not. <laughs> he said, that, you, you got it wrong, George, you got it wrong. Right. And he's like, dude, you need to um, find something you're passionate about mm. because you, because without purpose, because I said, you know, for our work week, it's a bit boring, Tim. Tim, like, you know, it's fun, but I do nothing. It's boring. And he said, you need to find your purpose. Mm. You need to see, look, if the world needs it, if you get paid for it, if you're great at what you do, you love it, that's your purpose. You're itchy, so Joe. You're itchy, yeah. you're itchy, Joe, yeah. So I, after, oh, yeah, so what did you call it? That's the Japanese version, isn't it? Yeah, the, it's the, it, you're itchy, Joe. Yeah, itchy, Joe. I didn't realise. I always pronounce it wrong. But, <laughs> We know what you mean. Just all this, the, the little image of the circles are coming yeah. in. And, and little Venn diagrams. Yeah, exactly. right. yeah, yeah. So pretty soon I thought, you know what? What do I love? I love property. Mm. And everyone asked me for advice anyway. So I thought what I'll do is maybe part-time teach people property and just, you know, for a bit of fun. So I started helping people and people started getting some great results mm. and and I was only planning on doing it part-time. I wasn't planning on building a big business. Like I did my original marketing business. I was only planning on doing that part-time as mm. well. But I just, once I start doing business, I get excited and I start growing. And before you know it, before you know it, now we've got 10 staff. We're Australia-wide. And, you know, it's huge. We've got over 2,000 members Australia-wide who are yeah. extremely successful and grateful. So we've grown quite a big business. Mm. And I love it. I really enjoy it. It's... um. And people, a lot of people see, this is what I get a lot because I've got, you know, I run ads on Facebook and so many people are saying, you know, well, if you're so rich, why do you work? That's exactly and I always right. get that question, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, yeah, right, okay. Because, you know, I live on the beachfront, I am, you know, and I'm talking, there's no road in front of my house. It's just me and the beach. They're mm. very rare in Australia. Mm. Um, so I've gotten everything I need and I never have to work again because my properties make me more money than I could ever do. You know, last year I made over a million dollars out of property and I could, I can't make a million out of, out of business. You know what I mean? Mm. And I like business. Not, it's not just for the money. It's for the, the challenge that you got, you know, doing something that you love. And um, a lot of people don't realize that because you need to find something you love because I really think happiness, you know, you've got money and freedom. That's the bottom of happiness, mm. right? 
But then you've got deep, meaningful relationships and health. That's the sort of triangle that I believe makes happiness. And business mentoring gives me that opportunity to have deep, meaningful relationships with people. Mm. Because you don't want to build deep, meaningful relationships sitting at home doing nothing and suntanning. <laughs> not going to happen. And it's not going to be that good for your health either. No, no, no. no. Wrinkly, wrinkly, tan skin, not, not so good. So did you find that then, you know, starting this process, you were able to really sort of find, because you mentioned purpose, you know, what, what is your purpose in your vision or your mission now? Yes, okay, yeah, my, my, my vision is to empower 10,000 Australians to create wealth through property using the Markovsky method. Mm. That's, my, that's my purpose. And I love it. It's nice and simple because I know that if I can help 10,000 people, you know, because I really think, I really believe this. I think, you know, 90% of millionaires and self-made people made their money out of property. Yeah. I know property has done so much for me and I've seen what it's done for other people. It's amazing. Mm. My, my wife, her auntie, um, she, we, we, we caught up at a family barbecue and we were talking about property and she was, she was a single mother of two and she was struggling to pay a mortgage and thought she was going to lose a house. And I said, look, why don't you come and do our program? You know, your family, I've, I've got to do something and help someone. So anyway, so what I did is I, she joined our program and now four years later, she's paid off her house completely. She's got an investment property that's gone up 80 grand and she makes $150 a week. And the difference from being stressed out to just being relaxed because for her, paying off a house, you know, the, the, the investment property is just a bonus for her. You know, paying off the house to her was a big stress and she did yeah. it, you know, yeah. which she's wrapped, you know what I mean? And to see that happen, the change in people, because when people create that sort of financial independence through property, mm. it gives you confidence and helps the rest of your life. Yeah. Because yeah. then, you know, if you, because some people are in a job they don't like, or some people are running a business and working hard, but it's not what they want to do. And it's once you start getting um, passive income, then that gives you choices to say, okay, do I really want to do this or don't I want to do this? Mm. Gives you that little space where you can say, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to design the life that I want to live? Mm. Right? And most people think retirement is the goal and doing nothing. And if you're working hard, I get that. And it's a really good goal. But the next step is actually finding a purpose, which is even bigger and better. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's and you're right. It's not so much the, the desire to retire and do, like I said, sit, sit on the beach all day because it quickly gets quite, quite boring because, first of all, everyone else is working. Or <laughs> if they're not, you sort of go, well, I'm not doing anything that's, you know, contributing to anything else in society. <clears throat> that's where I think people in general, like, you know, us as human beings have this continual, I'd say most of us have this continual need to, to want to give back, want yeah. to give back. And, and I can see, you know, cause I do know a few people that, that, that do, do your, uh, are following your system and done your course, like, you know, how excited they are to be able to purchase their next property, you know? Um, and, and, and the thing is that they've got their own businesses. They've got their own businesses. They're doing other things. Property is just a vehicle, a, a vehicle to allow them to, and it can do it fairly passively, like you said. Absolutely. And that's the beauty of it. The thing is, though, I mean, if you're going to make money out of business and if you leave that money in the bank account, your monkey, your money, not monkey, your money is shrinking. <laughs> shrinking monkeys, right? Oh, shrinking monkeys. You don't want your, money, your monkey shrinking, do you? No. So your money shrinking. Because at the moment, what's happening is the reason... Bitcoin's going up and gold's going up and property's going up is because of inflation. Mm. And when there's inflation, if you've got money, your money is shrinking over and over. And that's mm. what you need to really diversify and, and invest. Because you look at um, Robert Kiyosaki, I'm a big fan of Robert Kiyosaki. You look at the cash flow quadrant, right? So we've got the cash flow quadrant and you've got employee, self-employed, business owner, investor. Mm. So if you're working a business, you're either self-employed if you're doing all the work, you're self-employed. If you can go away for two weeks and, not, and, and your business doesn't break down, then you've got a business. Yes. You're in that quadrant. Yes. But what's the goal? The goal is to get into the investment quarter, that, that little square, because when you're an investor, that's when it's all passive. And that's when you can create freedom and do what you need to do. Absolutely. And I really believe, you know, the lifestyle you want, the holidays you want, the house you want to live in, the family life you want is all one good property portfolio away. Mm, yeah. And so like 
George, how do you, and a lot of people go, well, I don't have real a lot of time to really understand property or I've got, you know, I'm, I'm maxed to my eyebrows in my mortgage. Um, how can I even, I don't even have, I might not even have enough serviceability to get an investment property. I mean, just high, just high level. Like how do you help these sorts of people to be able to get off that, that rat race and the, the property rat race? Yeah, good, good question. That's a really good question because a lot of people don't know how to get in there or they're paying too much money because cash flow is so important when it comes to property. And 99% of people got cash flow wrong. Mm. We, we've had members join us and within three weeks, we've changed their cash flow by $55,000 a year in three weeks. And is that by refinancing, looking at their mortgages, um, structuring and all of that? Is that... Yep restructuring, refinancing, and just changing the way they do things. Yeah, okay. And then usually when we're talking about paying mortgages off, mm. you go to rapid mortgage reduction and you can cut your mortgage in half as well. So yeah. the good thing is you get the extra cash flow, but you also cut your mortgage down, which is yeah. a double edge, which is awesome because the problem is most people think they've got to do the work. Most people want to pay extra payments and try to pay off their property. I say, don't pay off your property. Enjoy your life. Let the property do the hard work. Let the mm. banks do the hard work. Let all them. But really, it's a matter of people need to educate themselves. They mm. really do. That's the only way to empower yourself is to educate yourself. And I really think the number one investment you can make is actually yourself. Yes. Then, then it's business and property. You know what I mean? Yes. Those two things. And you know, me personally, I like property because it's safe. You know, business is exciting, but it's also very risky and can be stressful <laughs> oh yeah exactly and but uh, not on that it's also risky i mean yeah, yeah. in two years the in first two years 75 percent of business go broke mm. then in 10 years it's like 95 percent. like seriously you look at the statistics it's, mm. it's pretty shocking you know what i mean mm. uh, so yeah. yeah yeah and and so you know um george i think what would be really really good for people particularly as it we've got a lot of business people on this on this um in our in our community and they're listening in you know are business people also able to invest as well without spreading themselves too thin because is it you know we talked about this whole spreading ourselves too thin you know do i have to re-educate myself about property how much time do i have to and all of that how do you help people balance balance that yes good good question the thing is we have a lot of business people on our program. As you know, you know quite a few people that are on our, on our, on our program. And yeah. the reason I guess um, I've got a lot of business people on our program because I'm a business person, so we speak the same language. I get it. Mm. Right? And with business, getting loans is challenging and you need to really know how to navigate that because you're not, you're not going to walk into a bank as a business and uh, get a loan for a house unless you're Absolutely. really lucky. Yes. You, yes. Need to, you need to know how to do it because of getting it. But... Basically, you know, I'm not a big fan of complicated strategies to take hours of my time. I'm a big fan of the quickest way from point A to point B. Mm. That's what we do with our program because I spend less than 10 minutes a month on my properties. Yeah, right. And, and so you put the work in at the beginning to get educated and do what you need to do. Then the properties do the work for you. But, you know, most, I mean, let's say you've got a business, Right it's so worthwhile spending the, those hours to educate yourself. Let's say it's eight or nine hours to educate yourself and get a coach to look at what's happening and then get a property that's going to be positive anyway. So getting a positive property is actually going to help your business because you've got more cash flow. Yes. So that's the important thing. So I think cash flow wise, having more business, more properties is good for you anyway, because, yes. you know, especially if they're positive because you get more cash flow anyway. Absolutely. So for the business owners that are out there who are looking to get into to property investing, I mean, yep. from what I'm hearing is that it's, you know, it's fine. You look at, you know, looking at mortgages, possibly, um, I don't know if you look at low doc, you know, finance or self-employed finance. So there's all, what you're saying is that there's potentially solutions to being able to borrow as a business owner. Well, look, with over 2000 members Australia wide, I've seen it all. Yeah. So no matter what situation someone's in, they might think they're special, but I've probably seen it many times and I yeah. know exactly what needs to happen to make it happen. So, because with, with um, investing in property, it's a bit of an art and science, yeah. right? 
And I've, I've turned it into a science where it's all numbers. That's the important part <coughs> because <coughs> it's hard to make a decision unless you've got a number in front of you saying, giving you the number. And what I do is get it down to look at this number. Is the number right or is it wrong? And that's how you make a decision instead of having to have juggle all these things and not know what to do. Because the most reason people find property investing complicated because they don't understand the core principles. But when you understand the core principles, it's actually quite simple. Yeah. yeah. Really simple. Absolutely. So. Well, um, I'd like to be able to point people to start looking into the things that you do. So I know you've got a fantastic Facebook group there. Yes, we've got a beautiful, thriving community of nearly 4,000 passionate property investors oh my goodness, called Positive yeah. Property Club. And I go live there every Wednesday at 6.35. Yeah. Yeah. And so can people, do, you know, wanting to learn, what are their options for them? Is it a course or can they do a, con, you know, a consultation and, and, you know, say they already know a little bit about property, but they just want to be able to refinance their loans and structure and stuff like that. What are the options for them? Good question. I think the number one easy option is going into our group. Positive yeah. club, that's easy. But the second option is really doing our 14 day challenge. Okay. We've got a 14 day challenge where I teach you everything, right? And this is a paid challenge. The reason it's a paid challenge because I want people to put the work in. Mm. It's 14 days of your life, um, probably 20 minutes to an hour a day for 14 days where I go in a live Facebook group and teach you everything in property. And I suggest people do that before they have a consultation because then we're talking the same language. Because after that 14 days, you really understand the core principles and it's really simple for them to do it. Okay, right. What you do at the end of it is you create a billion dollar property game plan. And then you're set for life because you've got that plan. You never have to do it again. Mm. Mm. So when's the next 14 day challenge, George? Um, it's going to start on the 1st of March. Right. Okay. In the meantime, people can hang out in the Facebook group. They want to get a bit, real good sense of, you know, what, what it is that, that you guys do. Um, the things that people are, are, are learning from being a part of the community. Um, but more importantly, I said being able to look and see that if you're in business, like, and you're looking for extra income, like, you know, we always talk about diversifying your, 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 your risk or diversifying income. If you've got, if you're doing well in business, fantastic. You know, you've probably got some good cash flow. Look at how you can then leverage the strength of property investing to take it up to another level. Exactly. And then you can create even the real freedom because once you've got that freedom, then it's life's a lot easier. You know, yeah. when you've got, when you've got money coming in from your property, your business problems are not so big anymore. Yes. Cause that, 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 you know, your business can go up and down and fluctuate. Whereas your property portfolio is likely going to stay pretty solid throughout its lifetime. Absolutely. And talking about business, I'd love to have a chat to you about um, your outsourcing. Stuff. Absolutely. Fabulous. I mean, this is, again, it's all about, you know, whether it's outsourcing and property and, and these are areas I've, I'm, I'm, I can talk about day in and day out. It's yep. because outsourcing, again, provides a level of freedom in your business because exactly what you said, if you're working in your business and you can't move away from it, then it's giving you a job. It's a job that, you know, often sometimes doesn't pay as well. And if it does pay, but you're working the hours. Exactly. You- I totally agree. I don't know if you've ever heard of the book, uh, Who Not How? Mm, I have heard of it. I haven't read it yet. It's probably the most amazing book to read. And right. Who Not How has really changed my life already. And I've only, only read it two weeks ago. Because right. what I'm doing now, because normally what happens, let's say you've got a business problem. Yes. Normally you think, how do I fix this, right? Yes. It's the wrong question. Because the question is the most important thing. You should be thinking, who can fix this? Yes. And I've been thinking that way already. And it's a bit like property as well, because if you think, how do I invest in property? That's very hard, right? Mm. It's complicated. And what you should be thinking is who? Who do I know that just an expert that could just knows exactly? Because you need 10,000 hours to become an expert in something. Mm. And I've done 20,000 in property, so I know what I'm doing. (laughs) So, you know, for someone else to do property investing like me, it's going to take them 20 years. Your miles will learn from that 20 years and get the who. And so who's the person? George. And if you're going to, um, if you need something done in your business, think who, who do I get? Let's yeah. talk to Cheryl. She'll find the right who for me and we're set. Yeah. You know you're, what I mean? leveraging, you're leveraging people's skills and time and knowledge 
and connections. Yep. Um, and, and I think that's the one thing about, again, I think the word leverage itself is probably not said enough, whether you're leveraging property and leveraging growth in property or business. Um, uh, spot on, spot on on that, George. And I really like that. I really like that. Who not how? And it's I've about got my phone as a screensaver. Who not how? <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look that up. I think that's a fantastic because it was a conversation that I had with a good friend of mine the other day, and he was, we were talking about business growth, all right? And 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 he and he spoke about Cheryl. You know, look at you know who can you bring into your business, whether it's shareholders, whether it's you know consultants or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Like we all need to be able to grow in some way, and we don't have all the knowledge. No, we don't. We don't. Expertise to do it. And this yeah. year, I'm outsourcing everything. I'm actually moving to Bali soon. Oh, you're gonna join? You're gonna <laughs> join Barry and his. his I've his decided. Friend. I'm giving up winter. Oh, that's I've a said no to winter. So what I'm doing now is for six months in the year, I'm out of here. So I'm going to move. Actually, I am joining Barry, funny enough, because so, he lives in uh, Changu. That's the place to be in Bali. Yeah. And because um, what we've done at the moment is I've outsourced a lot of my stuff at home. Yes. Right. So I get someone that comes in and does all my supplements, puts all my clothes away and tidies the kitchen. But um, I'm going to put that at the next level because I'm just going to have as many who's as I can. So then I can focus on the real important stuff, like having conversations like this, helping people become successful in property. It's it's very exciting. It's very exciting what, what can happen in the future. I love it. I love it. Fantastic. George, thank you so much for your time, sharing your journey, your knowledge. Um, I love that I'm going to check out that book as well. But anyone, I've put the um, I've put the the chat um, in the chat box and in the comment section the link to George's positive property group head into there definitely look at putting aside 14 days uh, for this challenge to be able to educate yourself about what you can do in property and things you probably didn't even think about I mean it's only 14 days right I mean commit to that and then 2021 could be a huge I mean we were just talking about this before George like property has grown like if people thought coronavirus had a huge hit on property in australia they got it wrong look the experts got it wrong and i was saying look i thought there's going to be a little bit of a dip and there was in melbourne but we seriously probably uh we're on the cusp of the biggest property boom in 50 years yeah that's just about to happen in australia and if this wave if people miss this wave you know because if you missed the last property boom it's not mm-hmm. your but we told you about this one. So if you miss it, it's your fault because you need That's to. Right. You've got a choice. You've got a choice. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to be checking out that challenge, George. Thank you. Um, and we're going to t- touch base because, again, with business, if you're doing everything yourself, you're probably not doing the best that you can in focusing on your high value. Um, we're going to talk about some outsourcing stuff as well. So. Absolutely, and I look forward to catching up with you on that. All right. Take take care, everyone. Ciao. Thanks so much, George. You take care. Bye-bye.